chose the Virgin Mary, by your grace, to be the mother of our Lord and Saviour. Fill us with your grace, that in all things we may accept your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Would you please sit for the reading? Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 61, verses uh, commencing at the 10th verse and going through to chapter 62, concluding at verse 3. I delight greatly in the Lord, my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adores his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendour in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Our response passage this morning has, is called the Magnificat or the Song of Mary and we'll respond as we normally do. From Luke chapter 1, verses 45 to, 47 to 55. Mary says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant, the Almighty has done great things for me. God has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm. And the the seat. Casting down the mighty from their thrones. And the the Lord. God has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich by empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel. To the promise made to our forebears. Fourth message in the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. For the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> Let's 
stand and sing our gospel hymn. Ever Father, let's be thee, yours and yours alone. According to Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustine that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I speak to you in the name of God, who we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, this is a first for me. I have never preached on Mary before, ever. I haven't heard too many sermons, but I'm probably the same. <laughs> so let's explore the readings and, and the meaning of today together. So today we celebrate Mary, the mother of our Lord. August 15, has, so that was Tuesday, has been designated the Feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Many denominations mark this day, and in our prayer book, this feast day comes between August 6th which is a day on which we can celebrate the Transfiguration. It's also Hiroshima Day. And August 24, which is the feast day of St. Bartholomew. On August 15, Catholics celebrate the feast of the Assumption of Mary into heaven. This is the belief that when Mary died, the body did not decay, but it was assumed into heaven and reunited with her soul. Now, the Assumption of Mary in the heaven like that has been celebrated in the Western Church since the 8th century. But it was only in the 20th century, actually in 1950, that Pope Pius XII declared that for the Catholic faithful, the Assumption of Mary was an article, article of faith. In the Orthodox Church, this day is marked as the Feast of Mary, but in a different way. Today, the Orthodox Church Celebrate the dormition. Is that a word? The dormition means falling asleep. So they're celebrating the falling asleep of Mary, the Theotokos, the mother Greek word, which means God bearer. So for Orthodox Christians today, this feast is the dormition of the mother of God. And it's a great feast day for which they prepare with two weeks of fasting. 
volume to that, but it's not that bad. <laughs> Actually, Mary's role in the story of salvation has been acknowledged more in the Anglican tradition in the past hundred years than it ever was before, really. But the doctrine of the assumption of Mary is not regarded as an article of faith for Anglicans. And we all know there's a huge variation between churches in our Anglican communion, as well as between other denominations, about Mary's significance and how we relate to her. So, what might we be celebrating today? Well, whatever we think about Mary, the Mother of God, the Theodicus, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Assumption of Mary, the Dormition of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whatever we think about that, what we do today is to celebrate what has happened in our world and to and for us as a result of Mary's action in the Jesus story. Whatever colour our glasses are, and mine are fairly rosy, we have to admit that notions of the past, with its great battles between saints and dragons, goodies and baddies, are kind of romantic visions of the past. But, yeah, I can hear you speak, oh yes, yeah, she's got a but. But, I think for us, the struggle between what we perceive as right and wrong goes on. And to our good fortune, Mary, the mother of Jesus our Lord, the Mary we celebrate today, gives us a clear picture of the very things we see as wrong, so that our faith is grounded in the real world and not in some fairy tale wonderland. We read Mary's song, we read it, didn't we? We read Mary's song, The Magnificent, in place of our psalm today. And surely we can see that as a call to our world to put things right, to transform our world for the good. This is a young girl. She's not like 28 years old and single. She's a young girl. Girls were mature at about 12 at that time. She's already powerless because she's female. And she's still a child, more or less. And now she's pregnant. Another reason to be shunned by polite society, by polite men's society. So where does her amazingly confident declaration come from? She sings of God, of a God who doesn't act as expected, a God who is about to turn the world upside down. And lest we think that Mary's song is not relevant to us, in our space and time, listen to her song as she names the evils of the day the social evils of our day. Poverty. The imbalance of power. Injustice. Hunger. Lack of shelter. We don't need to see the news or even hear the news to know that these dire features of Mary's world still exist in our world, unrectified even in our wealthy and prosperous times. Now this song of Mary, because I had, I've done it, but I had studied it before, gave me a bit of a shake up this week. Because this is not some kind of dreamy, airy, fairy wishing, is it? Now sometimes I find when I'm, you know, a bit fed up and a bit down with the world and thinking, oh, if only God would act. If only God would bring in the kingdom. Yeah, I know it's kind of silly. I don't do it every day. Only when I'm really at of what's happening. But what Mary's song did for me this week was to recognise that Mary was a radical. And just as she put her faith into action, we are called to put our faith into action, to do our bit to bring in the kingdom. And I'll bet you've all heard a lot of nonsense spooked about Mary over the years. Don't worry. In the history of the church, it tells us that it took the church six centuries, that 600 years, to declare officially that women had souls. <laughs> and then it took another six centuries Another 600 years to take seriously 
the humanity of Jesus and the implications of that for the study of theology. It's true. Go figure. So it's no wonder that there's a lot of mumble about just what we're celebrating today. It is time to listen up though, because this is important. If Mary is an ordinary human being, as we are, even if we don't like to admit we're ordinary, if she is an ordinary human, then her human death is not an indignity. And it doesn't need to be explained away in a theological context. Aha. But, this was a but. If, however, the prophet Elijah could be whooshed up to heaven at the end of his ministry, well, why not Mary? The God bearer, the mother of Jesus at the end of hers. Mary is indeed human, because if she's not, then neither is Jesus. And if Jesus is not human, well, what's the point? Because we are not saved. It's worth thinking about, isn't it? You know, Mary's always been a bit of a problem for the church, obviously, because it was run by men and she was a woman. Mary's virginity, her motherhood, and they've been used for, since time immemorial to limit the options for women. At my Catholic school, Mary was just held up as a super example of a girl and of a woman. And we all knew, we were all girls, we all knew we'd never measure up against Mary. And I think for some of them, that might have been the beginning of their disillusionment with the church. Also, to aspire to a career was not quite as good as offering yourself to the convent. Just seeing no one could decide really what to do with feisty, educated women who cared about equality and wanted to be taken seriously. Of course, a lot later, I discovered that the most enlightened ones at the school were really the nuns, who they fulfilled their approved roles, but they also held quite radical views on society and the roles that women could feel successful. Now obviously our society has come a long way. We've been blessed with enlightened men and women who've changed our world for the better for women and for men. Not for all women everywhere though. It's still worth praying about. But there are still senior officials and politicians who choose to deride women and girls over all sorts of things. The way they dress maybe because they disapprove of that. Our culture, even our culture in some places, still thinks it's okay to tell women, and sometimes men as well, what they can eat, what they can wear, how to act, how to behave, who to go out in public with, etc, etc. This is a world, my friends, where the Me Too movement needed to happen. Mary's song, that radical vision of the future, is not a song for women, it's a song by a woman. And this song has become a clarion call for every Christian who shares that vision of a better world, a blessed world, a loving world, a kingdom world, where the hungry are fed, the homeless are housed, wealth and privilege are equally shared, and nobody is made more perfectly in the image of God than anyone else. Because you know what? Mary's song is not a fantasy. It's not a daydream. The needs Mary describes as being met by our great God are still with us. The evils of greed, of anger, of pride, of power for power's sake are just as threatening as ever. And as adults we know that there will be no knight in shining armour coming along to put things to rights. Those who are coming along, however, Ordinary human beings, just like us. Ordinary human beings, because Mary's story, Mary's song is ours too. 
And we are ordinary human beings who are called into a loving relationship with God. Called to work with God and within God's gracious plan to play our part in bringing in the kingdom. We do know that this is already happening. Because we know that goodness won out. Mary and her child survived, despite murderous attempts to foil God's plan. Mary's yes to God meant yes to the incarnation. God becoming one of us. Not too ordinary as it happened, but one of us just the same. Incidentally, I'll just explain. When the server puts the wine in the chalice, and then adds a drop of water. That's to, that reminds me, anyway, that of Jesus' divine and human nature. And it recognises that. So it's in our service every single time we celebrate the Eucharist. That's what we're celebrating. Incarnation. God coming to us. And we are challenged by the Incarnation to ponder what our saying is to God by in time. What difference will that make to me, to you, to our families, our community? So we celebrate Mary today. We give thanks for her yes to God, for her faithful and intrepid living out of that yes. But let's also celebrate ourselves and be thankful that we are loved as God's own, as Mary was. May we have the courage and the grace to say our own yes to God in faith and hope and love. As we hear Mary's song, Echo Down the Generations, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. Amen. Now, in our time of reflection, I mean, we have some reflective music done, that would be lovely. You're going to see some pictures of the walking Madonna. Yes, please. <laughs> this, this is a statue outside Salisbury Cathedral. It's perhaps the most memorable and iconic artwork in the grounds of Salisbury Cathedral. And it was originally intended just to be a temporary installation. But this is a life-size, plinth less, not on a plinth, it's a life-size statue of a rather frail, older woman walking away from the cathedral as we walk every Sunday away from our service, going out there, saying yes to God and doing what he wants us to do to bring in the just have a little ponder.
stand down together and fill the faith of the church. What do we believe? We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, and life from life, true God from true God, begotten of God's name, of my being with the Father, through him all things on my name. for the voice. God who listens, open our hearts to hear the gentle invitation of those without a voice. Placeless and dispossessed of all that was theirs. Instead of anger, revenge or blame, they offer in their open hand absurd generosity, an act of transformational forgiveness from the centre of their being to ours. May we sense the integrity of country speaking to country, body to body, and find within ourselves the humility to accept and journey together to become our nature's better future, resolving our colonial memory, Australia's original sin. As Jesus gave his body for ours, Help us to receive and pass on this gift of new life for his name's sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Blessed are you, Jesus, and blessed is your mother Mary, for from her body was born the Saviour of the world. Fill us with your grace, that following her example we may bring your peace and justice to a troubled world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Blessed are you, Jesus, and blessed is your mother Mary, for she believed God's promises would be fulfilled. Fill us too with your grace, that following her example, we may receive your word, ponder it, and keep it in our heart. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Blessed are you, Jesus, and blessed is your mother Mary, for she became a refugee to save you from the tyrant's sword. Fill us with your grace, that following her example, we may protect the vulnerable and weak against the forces of inhumanity. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. blessed are you, Jesus, and blessed is your mother Mary. For she nurtured and cared for you as you grew to manhood. Fill us with your grace, that following her example we may cherish, love and nurture all whom you entrust to our care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed are you, Jesus, and blessed is your mother Mary. For she did not desert you as you hung on a cross.
fill us too with your grace. That following her example, we may stand with those who are in anguish, grief or pain. In our parish, we pray for Ruth, Grace, Gary, Pamela, Rosemary, Brian, Moira, Pauline, Patricia, Maureen and David, Des, Terry, Lorraine, Kate and her family, Nixon, Bailey, Bernice, Rayma, Peter. In the songs of our hearts we lift to our gracious Lord, those we know who are suffering. Blessed are you, Jesus, and blessed is your mother Mary, for she was witness to your risen glory. Fill us with your grace, that following her example we may, by the power of the Spirit, be your witnesses in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed are you, Jesus, and blessed is your mother Mary, for she lived with you in highest heaven. Help us to follow her example. And to remember those from our parish who have died, Phil, Kevin and Ron. We pray that the hour of our, the hour of our death, we too may be received with all the saints into the joy of your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious and loving God, accept our prayers through Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us your name. Whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. My friends, we are the body of Christ. Peace of the Lord be always with you. To him, from heaven he came, help the spade. Thank you. 
of God of all creation through your goodness we have these gifts to share, except in our offerings for your glory and for service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our praise and praise. Glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever be God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who was, who was born and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained the eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks for the obedience of your servant Mary, who by your grace answered your call to be the mother of your son. With all generations we call her blessed, and with her we rejoice in the greatness of your salvation. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your grace and glorious name, for ever praising you and saying, See. supper he took the cup and again giving him thanks he gave it to his disciples saying drink from this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me <coughs> let us proclaim the mystery of faith
Your word proclaims our salvation, which we taste in the bread of life. Grant us the humble obedience we seek in Mary, that we too may respond as willing servants to bear your word into our world. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us the power of your spirit to live in the world to your praise and glory. Go now and live in the righteousness that comes from faith. Delight in seeking the Lord. Recount what God has done and proclaim the good news of Christ so that all may hear and believe. And may the power of the presence of God be with you. May Christ's word be near you, on your lips and in your hearts. And may the Holy Spirit give you courage and calm all your fears. Amen. Amen. 